Fuller's 1845. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. This is a very special beer and it's brewed by Fuller's. Now I know there's been quite a few Fuller's videos been going up lately but as I say I've got a, a hamper from them and it's got some of my favourite beers of all time in there so that's why I'm reviewing them. Now I originally reviewed this I think in, I think it was either nine, 2019 or 2020, I can't remember, probably 2020. And I've had it a couple of times since, not reviewed it, but I want to review it again because, as I say, that was two years ago. When I first got into reviewing beer, seriously, a couple of years ago, my palate wasn't as it is now. I haven't tried the vast amount of beers that I have tried. You know, I've got over 1,500 videos of various styles of beer. So I have got a considerable... I wouldn't say knowledge, but I've got a considerable comparison sheet and I can, I think, judge one beer against the other, which is a good one and which is a bad one. Hopefully, anyway. I, the bottom line is I have an opinion on certain beers. And at the end of the day, as I always say in these videos, and every beer reviewer should be saying it as well, it is just a matter of opinion. Whether a beer is good, whether a beer is bad, it's your opinion, it's all subjective, it's like music. I sound like a broken record, yes, I know, but that point really does need to be hammered home. I see some beer reviewers and they talk, myself included, and I'm not slagging off any particular beer reviewers in this statement. I include myself in this statement as well. Sometimes they talk as if beers or their, their opinions on beers are fact. Now, I have certain opinions about French beer. Other people may not have that opinion. It's not a fact. I have no scientific evidence to back it up, only my personal taste, which at the end of the day is an opinion. So, as I say with all my reviews, take these whatever way you want. It's not gospel. I will give you some facts, sometimes scientific facts about beer, you know, in regard to off flavours, about beer being stored, how it's brewed, etc. They are facts, they're indisputable facts, that's the way it's done, but the actual taste, it's all subjective. So again, I'm gonna reiterate that this is my opinion. Anyway, we've got that out of the way. But getting back to the original point, I have tried a few beers and I haven't tried this in a while, so I wanna revisit it and I wanna give you an up-to-date review on it. Now, it, it is a special beer and it's special for a number of reasons. Firstly, it was first brewed in 1995. It was to celebrate 150 years of the Fuller's, or Fuller Smith and Turner, I should say, as it, as it was called back then. Hence the name 1845, because that's when the, the brewery was officially founded. They were brewing on that site before where the, the, the Griffin Brewery is in, in Chiswick, in West Four, very posh part of the world in West London, not for the likes of a North East London fella like me. But there is a good tradition of beer brewing in that region, certainly from the Griffin Brewery. And 1845 was the official date when the Fuller's Brewery was founded. Now, Fuller's do some great beers. In fact, I'll retract that statement. In my opinion, they do some absolutely outstanding beers. And I think this kind of beer is what they is what they do best and I'd go as far as to say they are probably and you can shoot me down here but in my opinion I think they are one of the best brewers if not the best brewer at doing dark rich strong English ale I 
know there are some good other ones out there. Shepherd Neem, for example, they do some good strong ales. Uh, and I'm sure, like Old Peculiar, um, that's that's a great a great strong English ale. I'm, I'm talking about the old ale style now. And if people are sick of hearing about old ale from my gob, well, you better get used to it because it is my favourite style of English beer. And if it's done right, then it really is a fantastic world-class style of beer. You can include barley wine in that because the whole genre or style of beer does encompass the two. So old ale I would class as stuff like Old Peculiar, very dark, very malt forward, quite heavy on the ABV. Um, occasionally quite heavily hopped, usually sweet, sweet malty with some invert sugar in or or that kind of thing. You know, the, the usual English style beer adjuncts, that includes licorice as well. There are some great examples of this beer. Theakston's Old Peculiar, as I've just mentioned. The um, Hepworth Old Ale, I think is a brilliant style. Um, maybe the ABV is a little bit lower now. I think that's about 4.5, but but this for me, this and the Shepherd Neem 1698 are two absolute standout ones. And also I'll go as far as to say the Adnams Broadside in the bottle. It's different on cask, they, it's a lower ABV, but in the bottle I think it's 6% and that does taste great. I should really do a shootout between them three. Wow, what a, what a shootout that would be. Um, I, I really couldn't separate them going from memory, it would have to be done on the day. Maybe I should uh, make a note of that and, and do that because that would be very enjoyable and hopefully informative to you. But anyway, we're not talking about them beers specifically today. We're talking about this stuff, the 1845. Now, it's a bottle conditioned beer and it's one of them beers that is matured before it comes out of the brewery. It says it on the front here. It says uh, bottle conditioned ale matured to perfection for 100 days. Now, when they say it's matured to perfection for 100 days, you can, of course, which is what they do with the vintage ale, which I've got here. I don't know when I'm going to break that open, but that is going to be a great beer. I know it is. I just feel it in my bones. But this stuff is uh, bottle conditioned as well, obviously. And that means that you can leave it and it will, it will change flavour the more it matures. That's already been matured for 100 days, which is not bad going. The sell bite date on this is the 1st of April 2024. So that will give you an indication of how long that's good for. And you can even drink it after that. I'm not sure what the, the record is for it. And I'm not going to... I don't think I could, to be honest. I'm such a fucking weak-willed twat. I, I can't leave this on the on a show. I'd have to give it to someone who doesn't drink and then resist the urge not to ask them for it and then, yeah, try it again in, a, in another two years. I'm sure it would taste great. I'd love to, Again, I'd love to do a comparison with that, but it's just impossible for me. I'm fucking useless when it comes to that. I've got no willpower when it comes to decent beer. Anyway, enough about my shortcomings on this. I'll give you a, a, quite a, an in-depth rundown of the brew sheet in the next section, but it is in, quite interesting. Now, as I've said, this is bottle conditioned. A lot of bottle conditioned beers from the UK say not to pour the, the yeast into the beer, which goes against everything that is Belgian and the German wheat beers, which you positively have to throw the yeast in there because that's what gives it its flavour. Now yeast does really impart some interesting flavours. It can impart very sweet flavours like honey, that type of thing. You get some nice esters off it, such as certainly on the Belgian beers, you get black pepper, some clove as well, sorry, white pepper, I should say, not black pepper. You get white pepper and you also get clove as well. And them two flavours on Belgian beer, that's the characteristic, in my opinion, of a Belgian beer. The clove, white pepper, occasionally banana as well. Now, if you're talking about bananas, then obviously you want to try a German wheat beer because banana and clove is the defining flavour of a German wheat beer. I've tasted it without that kind of flavour that's coming from the yeast, and that came from the Bolton Brewery. And uh, yeah, it wasn't that great. It's, it tasted very, very strange. They use out beer yeast in a wheat beer. And yeah, you, you just have to forget everything you know about wheat beer, or German wheat beer, I should say, and uh, go with it. It was a bit too off the wall for me. I don't know why they did it, but that's them. Bolton, spelt B-O-L-T-E-N. They're from the uh, North Rhine-Westphalia region of 
Germany, uh, you will probably n not get a better out beer. The Ur out that they do is absolutely fantastic. If you can hunt that down, I highly recommend that. I've reviewed it on the channel, that got a 10 out of 10. It was absolutely superb. Probably one of my favorite German out beer brewers. And out beer is a little bit hit and miss. There are some dodgy ones out there. Diebels, I think, are a bit, a bit dodge. And there's a couple of other ones as well that spring to mind. Slurscher, they're a quite, quite a good one. I did like some of their out beer. Anyway, we are not talking about out beer. I'm going off on a tangent. Um, that's really all I'm going to say about this. I've run down the history of the Fuller's Brewery so many times. I really don't want to do it in this. Let's get on to the next section. Let's see what's going on with the beer. Right, this is a 500ml bottle. It is 6.3%. That is what I like in a beer because that does encompass the old ale style. People go on about IPA, and IPA and old ale are linked. They do have a, I wouldn't say a common history, but they do share a lot of the characteristics. Old ale was quite heavily hopped, same as Porter was as well. And contrary to popular belief, and I've had this debate with a few people, and this is one of the things that I can actually back up with some, some factual historical evidence. Uh, th there is no evidence, in fact, to prove that beer sent over to India was highly hopped to survive the journey. The, the large number of hops that went into beer was because that kind of style of flavour, the bitterness that hops give you, was very popular at the time in the, uh, in the 18th century. And that's why they kept putting more and more hops in. And when they discovered that it was actually a preservative, well, that was just a bonus as well. And of course, Porter used to go to India in just as much, probably more volume than the pale ale or the India pale ale as, as it became known. It wasn't originally called India pale ale, but it did sell more over there. It was more popular. And the reason it was is because it was cheaper and it's what the soldiers in the British Army drank. They drank Porter because it was cheaper and it was the preferred preferred beer over there. Anyway, again, I'm going off on a tangent. Let's get back to this beer. As I say, 6.3%, 500 mil. Uh, I'll read out a spiel on the back. First brewed in 1995 to celebrate our 150th anniversary. This bottle, uh, this bottle condition recipe is inspired by the original Fuller's Brewing Books. To in, uh, uh, what else have we got? The Amber Malt and Goldings Hops. I'll get onto all this in a bit because there's a bit more to the malt than, than is written on the back. Uh, the amber malt and Goldings hops combine to create a delicious fruitcake aroma. As this beer is bottle conditioned, we recommend it stored upright and poured carefully. Well, this was stored upright. The reason they say it's poured carefully is because they don't want you to get that yeast in there. I always throw the yeast in there, so that point is wasted on me. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, on the front, bottle conditioned, mature to protection for 100, 100 days, as I have just mentioned and that's about it that's all you're going to get in the bowl uh, let's talk about the brew sheet because that is quite interesting you have got in, in the malts in the malt bill you've got pale you've got amber as i just mentioned it's got chocolate malt and you've also got crystal malt crystal malt as you know i've mentioned it on a few videos is the sweeter type of malt it contains a lot more sugars on there because of the way it's it's kilned it's kilned just after the shoots come out on the malt because obviously the the, the actual plant is producing sugar to feed these new shoots. It's kiln to kill off the shoots, but the sugar still remains. That crystallizes, hence the name crystal malt, and that's what gives you a nice sweet flavor from crystal malt. Amber malt, very old style of malt, used a lot in Czech beers and some German beers as well. It gives the beer a nice dark color, and it's a malt that is used a fair amount in English beer. I wouldn't say a lot. You tend to find it in lighter colored beers, to give it a little bit of colour, if you know what I mean. And that's a bit of an oxymoron. I should ref kindly rephrase that, shouldn't I? If you look at a lot of uh, Czech, Czech beers, you'll see that they're amber. They use uh, amber malt in there. A fair amount in Czech beer as well. So that's where you, you, you get that colour from. It's the amber malt. That's what it's designed to do. It's not designed to give it a nice colour. And it does give it a nice flavour as well. Nice, nutty, sweet type flavour too. Chocolate malt doesn't really need any explanation. It does give you a type of chocolate sweetness to it, but it's it's not chocolate as you know it. It's not like biting into a fucking dairy milk or something like that. So don't think it's like that. Now the pale malt, that's your base malt. That's quite interesting because it is a, is a composite of other malts. And them other malts are Pipkin, Maris Otter, and Halcyon. Now Maris Otter is a great malt. And when I see Maris Otter in a beer, 
it's rare and I don't think I've been proved wrong yet. Maris Otter is an expense, expensive malt and it's occasionally used in beers, darker English beers, but it, it is a sign of quality in my opinion. I don't, as I say, I don't think I've had a, a bad beer with Maris Otter malt in it. So if you are lucky enough to be buying beer that do list the brew sheet on the, on the back of the bottle, always look out for Maris Otter or if you're doing your research, always look out for Maris Otter. If it contains Maris Otter, it's usually a good sign because that is a high quality style of malt. Now apparently them malts have come from Simpsons. Simpsons, if you look on the, on the internet, are a huge provider of malt to the brewing industry in the UK. So there you go. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into the beer. Let's crack it open and let's see what's going on. Right, got me London Pride glass. I can only drink that out of a Fuller's glass, couldn't I? And let's get it open. Right, usual Fuller's cap. Can you see that? Because it's fucking autofocus. Let it do its thing. There you go. Right. And look, it's already foaming up out of the bottle there. That is down to the bottle conditioning. Now this is coming out, I've put this in the fridge and it's relatively chilled. It's, I think it's a toss up between slightly chilled and cellar temperature. If you can imagine a, a cold cellar in the middle of winter. Wow, get the aromas from here. And it, it just looks good, doesn't it? Look at them tightly packed uniform bubble on the bubbles on the head. That is the sign of a really good beer. Oh, it smells lovely. When they say fruitcake, they have fucking nailed that to a T. That just smells like pure fruitcake. And I've got some down there, whiskey infused um, fruitcake with nuts and stuff in it. It is fucking gorgeous. I eat it for breakfast, I know I shouldn't, but it is lovely. And sadly, I'm coming to the end of it. But when I open the tin, I do get this kind of flavor. It's just, again, full of fruit. This is typical Fuller's. I'm seeing a pattern here with Fuller's from the Vintage Ale. I recently tried the Golden Pride, which also smelt like this as well. That was an 8.5% beer. This is a 6.5% scent beer. Again, very much in the style of Old Ale Golden Pride. Excellent beer. Really, really did impress me. So, again, that's on the list to, uh, uh, to, to try and hunt down. If you want, uh, if you want decent beer, that smells really nice. Dark, sweet fruit, and there is a little bit of uh, a roasted note to it. That's giving it a, a chocolatey style aroma, but there's big toffee on there as well, and that really does. The mixture there isn't like an appleish type, an uh, apple in a good way, not the off flavour apple, but it, it's almost smelling like toffee apple. You know that sweet, sweet sugar you get around a toffee apple. That's what it's. Smelling like, oh, it, it just smells amazing. I mean, Fuller's, this is where Fuller's excel. They really do know what they're doing. And it looks like a great pint as well, doesn't it? That is absolutely superb. And this all came in that hamper, that Fuller's hamper. Do you know what, I might have to buy another one of them because there are some really, really good beers in there. Oh, it just smells absolutely amazing. Sweet, dark fruit, sweet dried dark fruit. And again, I, I know it's a cliche and it's written on the, on the bottle as well, but that really does smell like fruitcake. I can't describe it any better. Now it's bottle condition. I'm just gonna throw everything in there and throw caution to the wind. Yes, I am drinking dead yeast cells. Go me. And there it is in the glass. Right, it looks, yeah, that is, that is very, very cloudy indeed. And it looks great. Occasionally you can get this on cask, but I've not seen it. If I do ever find out where it is, I will be straight down there emptying that cask. Anyway, let's get it down the hatch. Good elf. Oh, that is so good. It, 
And there is a lot more to that as well than simple dried fruit. This is a really complex beer. Oh, it's so good. It really is. On the palate, there's a bitterness to it. Sorry, I, I forgot to mention, there's only one hop in here and that's Goldings. And there is a slight bitterness on there from the hops. I think there may be some slightly roasted malt in here as well. Probably the, the chocolate malt is doing this. There's a bitterness on the palate, but the finish is just pure fruit of every description. Now, you obviously you've got the dark fruit that I mentioned. I can detect a very, very subtle, and I do mean subtle, orangey zest in this as well. There's a really nice bitterness to the finish on this, which is nice. It gives it a, a distinct character from the, from the Golden Pride. I think them, them Goldings that have been put in there, they really have got everything out of them because there is a, a nice bitterness on the finish, a spicy black pepper finish, which is good. But you couple that with the, the sweet fruit that you get on here, and it just, it just makes for a really complex beer. All right, so good. That is fantastic. But there is a bitterness on this. That's one of the dogs trying to get in. He's not getting in because he's going to be a pain in the ass. I know he is because he wants feeding. What time is it? It's nearly four o'clock. And they want to, it, it's not getting fed for another hour. This is my hour. This is really good. I'm going to try and recap these flavours for you. Right. Very malty on the palate. You get quite a bit of... Uh, it comes across as a roasted type malt type flavour. So that's like a, a chocolate malt, bitter chocolate, not coffee, because there is too much of sweetness to give it that real bitterness that you get from the from the roasted malt. But there is a hint of hot bitterness on that too. And that transfers to the finish as well. In between all that, you're getting all the dark fruit. There is the, no, it's like black cherry, damson and plum. They're the ones that I'm immediately picking up on. But to really sort of encapsulate the flavour of it, and they've done it themselves, and it does really taste like that, is fruitcake. If you can imagine like a dark, almost, I wouldn't say, well, yeah, I suppose like a Christmas cake, a rich style Christmas cake. That's what it's like, you know, the dark raisin in there, that type of thing. And I am getting the orange zest in there, but it's very subtle. Now, orange zest is a sort of a trademark of um, Fuller's beer. I occasionally get it in the, well, I did when I tried the vintage ale, I got it in there. I do get it in the Fuller's Bengal Lancer. And I'm looking down there because I've got a bottle looking at right at me, and that's going to be going down the hatch after this one. The Bengal Lancer does have that running all the way through it, and it's really nice. I do like that. It does complement that beer really well. But I'm getting it in here too. And it's nice. And again, the aromas are just great. They're very, very strong. There's that dark chocolate, roasted dark chocolate, if you can imagine that. There's the, the, the huge dark fruit on there. And yeah, it's Christmas cake, but it's so good. This really is an amazing beer. And I don't think I, I like it as much as the Golden Pride, but it is still an absolutely outstanding beer. For me, that's, again, this is what Fullers do best, the past masters, and it's what this country does best as well. This is what we should be really aspiring to, this type of beer. It's amazing, I love it, and I don't care what the trend is now for your, your fruit cocktail beers, your, your American hopped, your American style beers. This, for me, is what we do best, and I'm gonna fly the flag for 
for English and English beer because no other fucker's doing it, so I'm gonna do it. So what is the verdict on Fuller's 1845? Well, I always knew this was a good beer because when I first tried it, I think it was three years ago, it was a standout beer then and nothing has changed. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding the Asahi takeover of Fuller's. Some people are saying that the recipes have changed, but going by the last two beers that I've tried, the Golden Pride and the 1845, um, they're still good beers. I'll forget about the, the lager, the Frontier Lager. Christ almighty, that really wasn't good. Do you know what? Here's one for you. I was looking up the day on the, on the Fuller's website. They do an unfiltered lager. You can't get it in bottles. It's only available on, on, on keg, I think it is. Keg or cask, I'm not sure. I imagine it'd be keg. Or would it be cask? I don't know. Maybe cask. Who knows? But they do one, and it's a beer that has got very, very promising ingredients. They use sart tops in the beer, which is a noble hop, which I said they should have done with the Frontier. But it also uses a, a hop, a, a German hop, that has been grown in the Hallertau region. And I've not tried that. But they've chosen to put the stuff with the American hops into a bottle and, and sell that, which I think, in my opinion, is a real flaw. I need to check out that, that lager, and it's, an, it's basically an unfiltered lager. And you could argue that potentially is a Keller beer. A Keller beer with Sartz hops and German Hallertau hops brewed in the UK. Could be another one to add to the list of the only two. Is it that way or is it that way? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I fucking love that. Do you know, I'll do that to people and they don't get it. Everyone thinks you need to do that. We need to bring back that. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about this uh, unfiltered lager. It, it could potentially be another one of the best lagers that they brew in the UK. I need to track that down. If I ever do on my travels, I'll flip out the old phone and do a quick review of it. But I've not seen it in a pub. I only found out about it today, that unfiltered lager, and it needs checking out. Anyway, let's get back to 1845. Uh, this is an outstanding beer for me. I love it. It's got everything I like in an English beer. And it's uniquely English as well. The bitterness on this is really nice. Now, I've gone over the you know the the various hops that you put into beer and how the bittering is done and what type of flavors you get from these English hops. You know the the black pepper spice and stuff like that. But on this one, the bitterness really is pronounced. But it's nice. And it works well with them sweet, malty flavours. And I think they've just got it spot on with this. And it's won a hell of a lot of camera awards as well. And rightly so too. It is a fantastic beer. Um, would it be better than the, the Golden Pride? Now, I really was bowled over by Golden Pride. Uh, do, I, do I prefer this? I don't know. And I've only had the Golden, I had the Golden Pride a couple of days ago. So again, this is from memory. But I don't think I can separate them because both of these beers are what I love about English beers. They are the characteristic of English beers. So it's, it's a real tough choice. And I, they're, they're different beers. This is more on the bitter side, but they do still fall into the same style of beer, i.e. the old ale slash barley wine style flavour. I think the Golden Pride is a little bit bordering on the barley wine but but they're both great and I have to give this a 10 out of 10 because if I gave it anything less I think I'd be doing it a disservice and there isn't many beers that come up to the the quality that Fuller's put into this style of beer this bottle conditioned strong English ale it's I think it's the best you can get now, I, I previously mentioned Theakston's, I mentioned Adnams, I mentioned Shepherd Neem as well. Yes, they are definitely worthy contenders for that, that category of strong ale, English strong ale, but Fuller should get the plaudits for that because I think they are, they are the best, the past masters 
at this style of beer. But there are some other worthy contenders as well. And I feel a few more shootout videos coming on because this really is my favorite style of beer and it will definitely not be a chore. But needless to say, 1845, if you're into your English ales and you just want to fly the flag for English beer, then you will not go wrong with this. It's a superb beer. 6.5%, you can't session it. You can if you want to get arrested, if you want to fall over, if you want to do some damage to yourself, i.e. physically or mentally, then yes, you can. But I'd advise not to session this, but just savour the flavours because there is so much going on there. I'm sure if I had a few more bottles of this, I would be getting more flavours, but it's really good. And it's a standout beer. It's a 10 out of 10 for me all day long. And this is what we do best, and this is what we should be flying the flag for. And remember, beer is working class champagne.